Niger, often overlooked, holds immense potential for the future under President Abdurahamane Chiani's leadership. Can his policies and vision propel the nation to greatness? This question is gaining traction worldwide amidst recent developments. While political shifts raise concerns about stability and governance, Niger's economic trajectory remains intact. In today's discussion, we delve into Niger's recent memorandum and China's plans for a new military base in Africa. China's influential project diplomacy in Africa began with landmark constructions, like the African Union headquarters in 2012. These projects showcase China's modernization and forward-thinking stance, bolstering its global image. They serve as potent tools for shaping opinions and garnering international favor. Recently, Niger signed a $400 million memorandum with China National Petroleum Corporation, CNPC, facilitating crude oil transfer from the Agadem oil field. CNPC's presence in Niger dates back to 2011, when it partnered with the Government for Oil Production at Academy. Chinese Ambassador Zhang Feng hailed the memorandum as a testament to the fruitful cooperation between the two nations. Last November, CNPC initiated a pipeline project linking Agadem to Benin's port of Cotonou, with Niger owning 15% of the pipeline. Previously, Niger's oil production was limited to a small refinery near Zinder, catering mainly to the domestic fuel market. With the pipeline operational, production is expected to soar to 110,000 barrels per day. China ranks as Niger's second-largest investor, trailing only France. Signs of China's apprehension over Niger's political turmoil emerged earlier, prompting Beijing to advise its citizens to leave the country. With the signing of this memorandum, it appears that all is well now. China's substantial investments in Niger, particularly in uranium and oil exploration, signify a strategic partnership and a steadfast commitment to investment despite political unrest. These investments focus primarily on infrastructure development, including the construction of significant oil refineries and the exploration of oil resources, with the potential to enhance infrastructure and spur economic growth. By diversifying partnerships through this memorandum, Niger aims to reduce reliance on any single country or region, opening up more avenues for economic cooperation and development. Similar to Russia, China emerges as a competitor to Niger's long-standing ally, France, promoting themes of non-interference and sovereignty that resonate with Sahelian nations. Given the abundance of natural resources in the Sahel region, including oil, uranium, natural gas, and lithium, it's unsurprising that China is keenly interested. However, concerns are rising about China's potential establishment of a second military base in Africa. For over 30 years, Africa has been the first destination for Chinese foreign ministers' international trips each year. This year, Wang Yi, China's foreign minister, has visited Egypt, Tunisia, Togo, and Ivory Coast, all coastal nations. Yet amidst speculation about China's next military base in Africa, these countries haven't featured prominently in previous analyses. China's only current African base, established in Djibouti in 2017, focuses on anti-piracy and freedom of navigation, securing trade corridors, and developing alternatives like the Mozambique-South Africa route. Initially a resupply facility, it has evolved into a logistics hub supported by up to two brigades of the People's Liberation Army. Djibouti's strategic importance and numerous foreign bases make it unique. If China considers establishing another military base in Africa, it seeks to avoid the surprises faced in 2011 during the Libyan conflict and in South Sudan, where its citizens and commercial interests were at risk. While China's desire for a larger presence in the region is evident, African nations have valid reasons to avoid aligning with any particular side, possibly leading them to reject or delay Chinese proposals. Rather than establishing additional military bases, China is more likely to focus on developing dual-use facilities at ports it has invested in across Africa. These dual-use bases would integrate limited military facilities with commercial ports, downplaying the military aspect of China's strategic port investments.
Wang's recent visit to Africa appears to have been aimed at reaffirming China's commitment to maintaining high-level relations on the continent rather than striking new base deals. Nevertheless, it's plausible that Wang discussed China's security concerns during his visit, particularly regarding fishing and piracy activities off the coasts of Togo and Ivory Coast, as well as shipping routes connecting Tunisia and Egypt to the Mediterranean and Suez Canal. China may have also elaborated on its global security initiative during these discussions. Amidst a more assertive and multipolar Africa, countries are under pressure to define their security interests based on whom and what they aim to protect. While the United States recently halted its military operations in Niger, negotiations are underway to potentially maintain a military presence. However, Niger's military leaders have raised concerns about the presence of American troops, citing violations of the country's constitution. The fate of the U.S. presence, including two military drone bases, remains uncertain despite approximately 1,000 troops still stationed in Niger. Furthermore, widespread demonstrations in Niger have demanded the withdrawal of American troops. Nigerians on the march again. They took to the streets last year to demand the withdrawal of French forces, and they succeeded. Force. These Western forces are coming to our country because it is full of uranium, diamond and gold resources. And these resources are untapped. These forces are at the origin of the arrival of terrorism in our country. Additionally, Russian military personnel arrived in Niger to provide training and equipment, signaling a deepening military cooperation between the two countries. If U.S. forces depart entirely, this could create opportunities for China to expand its influence in Niger. With the recent Memorandum of Understanding, China's influence is expected to grow gradually each year. One way to understand China's projects is through the lens of gift-giving and interpersonal interactions. Just as gifts establish binding relationships between the giver and recipient, China's investments in Africa create and strengthen social bonds alongside serving utilitarian purposes. These are invaluable possessions, intricately tied to their donor, symbolizing the establishment of relationships based on acknowledgement. Gift-giving, seen as an act of kindness and dignity, is closely associated with notions of prestige and honor. In international settings, gifts serve to enhance the status of the giver and solidify the recipient's position. Even amidst emphasized cooperation, the act subtly underscores and reshapes material disparities, enhancing China's global reputation, honor, and prestige. While gifts don't always create indebtedness, they often normalize material imbalances between the giver and recipient. China's grand architectural endeavors in Africa extend beyond mere construction projects. They serve as potent symbols of gifts, collaboration, aspirations, and diplomatic engagement. Embedded within these structures is a narrative that shapes perceptions, fosters goodwill, and reinforces China's stature as a significant player in Africa. However, some view these gifts as coming with strings attached. All right, folks, time to wrap up our journey through the wild world of African politics. If you've had a chuckle or two, hit that subscribe button faster than a politician changes their stance. Thanks for joining me. Stay tuned for more African political news.